Hi guys, welcome to Game Talk, Ajax Dortmund Champions League third game. We have Mark all the way from the US, smiling already. So Mark, take us through the game. Did we play Dortmund or did we play Cambuur? I read your tweet. <laughs> Honestly, it could have been uh, with the D-O-R in the top corner, it could have been door direct. <laughs> But uh, I mean, man, what a game. I mean, this was always going to be the test. This is the one I was always looking forward to. With all due respect to Sporting Lisbon and Besiktas, I mean, they're not exactly the best teams in the Champions League. I was always pretty confident that we were going to beat them pretty easily. So I wasn't too, too excited when we, you know, did what I thought we had to do against those teams. This was the game I was looking forward to. And this kind of proved it to me similar to the game against Bayern Munich away in the 2018-2019 Champions League when we drew 2-2, but we played at a very high level and probably should have beat them that night, that we are ready to challenge for the Champions League again. I'm confident in saying that now. Obviously, everything is draw dependent. You could get Manchester City and you might be out of luck, but I think we are able to compete with any of these teams in Europe. I have no doubt about that. All right. Are we being too confident because we just got energized because of the game? Or are you seriously saying this right objectively? I'm saying it fully objectively. I had always known that, first of all, Ten Hag's system is incredible. I knew that we had the talent. We've talked about this, you know, coming into the season that, hey, talent is not an issue this time around. Maybe it was last season, but it's not going to be an issue this time around. And if we could kind of put things together and come across – what we would sort of consider to be our best lineup, then we always knew we would have a chance to really make waves in Europe this season. And I think we stumbled upon it with Berghaus instead of Klaassen, which helps considerably. And it masks a lot of the problems that we were having previously when we would play Hilaire and Klaassen together, because the two of them, even though to his credit, everyone knows I'm not Hilaire's biggest fan at all but he played very well tonight in terms of actually holding up the ball and making smart decisions, which has not really been his trademark so far for us. But regardless, even if Haller is playing poorly or more of what his sort of level has been on the ball, without Klaassen in there, who's also pretty bad on the ball, it's kind of okay. We can hide that deficiency a little bit and all he needs to do is be in the box to score headers, to score chances, to win, you know, long kicks off of goal kicks and things like that and sort of like win flick on headers to Tadic and Anthony. So he can be useful. And so I think with Berghaus in there now, we've stumbled upon this lineup that is good enough for us to really make a run. And I think you're seeing the result of that because at the end of the day, Ten Hag system has always been incredible. You just need the pieces in there to perform it. And with this group right now, we had some good continuity, which is something that we historically didn't really have. Everyone knows their roles perfectly. Everyone's no, no one's really in their first season for us. Everyone's had a, a, a good amount of time to get used to everything. We still have the core guys and like Mazraoui and Blint and Tadic. So there's just the pieces are sort of coming together. And we now also have impact players off the bench, which we did not have the past two seasons. I mean, I remember when you look back at that, 2019-2020 season, when I think we were also still very good and primed to make a run, actually. You know, we played that crazy game against Chelsea 4-4, but we beat Valencia like 3-0 away, and we were looking strong and very good. But then you get one injury and two injuries, and all of a sudden we were starting Labiad, you know, in a big Champions League game, and we were playing, you know, like very just young, inexperienced kids and like Noah Long, who I think is great, but wasn't exactly ready yet. Whereas now... You know, we can bring in Kudus. Kudus didn't even play today. We can bring in Kudus. We can bring in um, Tagliafico. We can bring in Dorami, who's new, but he's young and he's vibrant. We just have options. And when you bring all of those things together, it's a team that can make a run. And I think when you, especially when you look at some of the other teams in Europe and how they're playing, besides Manchester City and probably Bayern Munich, there's not a ton of teams that I'm like super, super terrified of. Liverpool are obviously fantastic, but we played them twice last year when we weren't even anywhere near as good. We still did pretty well against them. I'm just pretty confident. I think if we get a good draw, at this point, we're in a good position to finish first in the group, which is massive. We can get an easier round of 16 draw. Yeah. 
then who knows? But this was the game for me. I was, I called it the litmus test before the game started and we delivered. Yeah. And Absolutely. I'm very, very happy about it. Yeah, everybody is. Uh, Mark, I just want to highlight one thing about the game today. Uh, I think we have to stress this a little bit. I remember in the summer you came as a guest on the Astro Talk and we had a discussion about Alvarez. So I want to, I want you to touch upon Alvarez if you change your opinion a little bit on him or whether it's still the same as what you said in the summer. And second of all, highly criticized player, not only Hilaire, but Posfer today should be mentioned. 100%. So I'll start with Alvarez. And I think we, you know, everyone has to make sure that the record is clear on Alvarez. It's like, I've always valued the things that he brings. And I think, I can't remember if it was you or it was some, one, one of the other people on the, on, on, on We Talk Ajax was saying sort of the same things in that he brings a lot of different qualities and he's very useful, but is he necessarily the guy who can take us to like the top level. And I think most people would agree that we didn't really think so. And he's like limited on the ball and he can get caught in possession. And sometimes he's just, you know, you, you watch him receive a ball under pressure and you're just like, ah, that's not the guy that we need against like Marco Verratti and Tony Cruz and Luka Modric. But I think what has happened is that Ten Hag has actually done something quite clever he's changed his system a little bit and if you watch the games from like 2018 2019 2019 2020 to now it is different in that we don't build through the midfield really anymore we, we don't really do it we all we have all we ask Alvarez to do is receive the ball and play it backwards to Timber to Martinez or to Blint that's it we've simplified his role completely I remember I saw a pass map the other day I can't remember if it was the game against Sporting Lisbon or whoever it was. Alvarez did not have a single arrow with passes moving forward, not a single one, yeah. which for my type of midfielder is a very bad thing. Yeah. That's what I always want. I want progression. I want people who are being positive on the ball. But Ten Hag is clever, and he realizes that with Timber, Martinez, and Blint, and Masraoui, who are unbelievable on the ball, that, hey, maybe we don't need Alvarez to do that for us. Yeah. Maybe we can just use him in there to win the ball back and get it to our better players who can pass the ball forward. And that's what we've done. And in that role, you know, hats off. Alvarez is incredible at it. He's incredible at winning the ball back. He, he runs for days. He's good in the air. He's brave. He's tenacious. And if all he has to do is just take a touch and pass it backwards, it's fine. And until we see a team that can actually take advantage of him being a little bit more limited on the ball, and maybe it's a game where we're actually struggling to progress through our defenders, then maybe we have a little bit of an issue. But until that happens, Alvarez can, can get the job done for me because in terms of winning the ball back, I would argue he's like literally like top four, top five in Europe. That's really how good he is. Um, I compare him to Fabinho a lot as the, as the guy that I use. He's very similar, like sort of lanky and tall and can run for days. And he's very good in that sense. So as long as we continue with this tactical setup, Alvarez is totally fine and I'm totally happy with it. And then going to Haller and Pospier, I totally agree. I mean, I tweeted it out today. When Pospier is making some of those saves, you know things are, you know things are going your way. And um, fair play to him. I think... A lot of fans got on him a little too quickly. I wasn't too upset about the mistakes happen. Even Onana last season in the Champions League made a couple of mistakes, or especially the one against Liverpool away. It does happen. Do I think Pasir is incredible? No. Would I still play Onana when he comes back? Yes, as long as his head is in the right space. And, you know, the fans and the players themselves agree that, they're happy with Onana playing. I would still do that because he's a phenomenal goalkeeper. And I think you don't bench a talent like that, even if he's leaving at the end of the season. Yeah. But fair play to pass here. And the thing that I was actually most impressed by, besides the saves, which were great, particularly the one on Holland on the crossbar, yeah. he was very good with his feet today, which was very important. I thought he had one in particular in the first half when they were kind of putting us under a little bit of pressure. I think it was after the second goal. We give the ball back to Pasquier and he's on like the, the right side of the penalty box. And it seemed like he was just going to kick it long and we were gonna, kind of going to get under pressure again. But he actually like waited and waited and waited and waited. And then Holland eventually pressured him. And he played like a nice pass into, I think, Alvarez and maybe Timber. And we all of a sudden we were building again. And for me, that's more important. When I see him doing things like that, 
because that's something that Stecklenburg sometimes not always as good with his feet. But I thought that was very impressive and made me more comfortable in posture moving forward. So I thought that was very good. And obviously, Hilaire talked about it a little bit earlier. The thing that I was most impressed by today was just the decision making and the ability to retain the ball. The goal was great. That's what he's not, that's what he's good at. Crosses into the box. You expect that. But for me, the biggest problem that I've always had with him, again, as everyone really knows, is that I just think he's way too loose in possession. He loses the ball too frequently. He's not strong enough. But today he did all of that. So I can't complain. That was a true target man's performance. It reminded me a little bit of like, kind of brings back some terrible memories, but it reminds me a little bit of like what Llorente did for Spurs against us a couple of years ago. And, you know, it's not my cup of tea, but when you have a player who's doing that effectively, it can be very, very useful. And we saw that today. Absolutely. So Mark, just to cap off, right? The biggest, the big, I mean, honestly, if, if people now ask you, Mark, 4-0 against Dortmund. So what happened? What's the biggest takeaway from this game today? What would you tell them, like briefly? I think I would say it was a definitive proof that we are among top eight, top 10 teams in Europe and that Eric Ten Hag's system when performed to this level is right up there with Pep and Klopp. And I genuinely believe that. I've said that for the longest time about Ten Hag that his system and his tactics are really superb. It's his player personnel and his squad selection that to me is his biggest issue. There are still things that I would change about this team. I think there are multiple things I would change about most lineups in the air divisi, but from a purely system and tactical perspective, Ten Hag is fantastic. And Marco Rose was one of the hottest properties in the coaching transfer market last season when he was coming from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Everyone thought Dortmund were going to be, you know, much improved from the season prior. Everyone thought he was like a very smart, tactical genius. And to be honest, Ten Hag made him look pedestrian today. And I think that's a true testament to how good he is. Are we all still entitled to criticize him when he makes mistakes that we think are impacting the team? For sure. But we truly should be very blessed and happy that he is still here. And it seems like he wants to stay because you can point to all the different players that we've had in the last four years and maybe we've made better signings and maybe the talent level is higher but I'm telling you we don't do this with Frank DeBoer I can tell you that so I think it's something to be said and for me that's why the biggest takeaway is that we're for real for sure and that Ten Hag you can't doubt the system because he really is he knows what he's doing player personnel sometimes but tactics that man knows what he's doing